Uh, yeah, if, uh, if you can unmute yourself, you can Good go morning. Um, okay, morning. We can hear you. Chamberlain, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to be on this platform. And uh, to say that uh, I welcome Dr. Baba Ahmed to this uh, program and uh, I want to assure him and your listeners, uh, all Nigerians, that uh, the administration of uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is addressing multiple challenges that are facing the country, especially in dealing with the security. And yet, you know, we're still making progress in agriculture, economy, anti-corruption, which are the key, you know, policies which have brought the office uh, to, to the party and the government into office. It is uh, sad uh, for the country that the opposition is exploiting some of these things. W quite unfortunate, but I want to assure that the president remains focused in preserving the security and the unity of this country. And I also want to say that uh, it's an established fact that all nations of the world face problems. And what is expected of all well-meaning members of society is that they should team up with government so that together we all fight criminality, insurgency, and all of that. And, and we accept that dissent is allowed. This is a democracy, and people have a right to tell truth to government. But we must be careful in doing that because, again, nobody, you can't bring down the government. This is a government elected democratically. Happily, uh, uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed taught social science in the university. He has been commissioner, uh, secretary, and member of INEC. Governments in a democracy come into office through periodic elections. And if, if you have a government in office, as we have, sponsored by a political party that continues to win elections. It is telling you that that confidence of the public is still there. Unless uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed does not himself believe in what he has been teaching young people all these years as a lecturer. People with strong voting ambitions just have to suppress this. Wait in four years. In fact, in our own case, two more years to go. There will be an election, President Buhari will not be a candidate in that election. Having said this, I hope that uh, I want to say to our viewers that no, the, the war in the Northeast against terrorism has not stalled. It is making progress and it is, it is almost finished. Look, as we speak today, major towns whose traditional rulers had relocated to mid-degree communities are in IDP camps. Towns and the cities like Goza, Askira Uba, Dikwa, Ngala, Munguno, Kukawa, Dambua, Konduga, Mafa. People are back in those communities. Okay. Their rulers are back with them, no longer residing okay. in exile um, in Medugu. So a lot of kidnapped people have been taken away. A lot of, uh, of, of uh, terrorists have been taken thousands of them have, have been have been have been have been shot and killed many of them arrested we poorly seized and destroyed mm. well, and so Shere, therefore, it, pardon me if, if i could just jump in and ask you um it, perhaps from what they're saying what seems to be coming across from what several people are saying is that the problem is not really the problem uh, the problem may be the way we are handling, the government is handling the problem. And one wonders, because if you look at some of the dailies here today, uh, bandits open fire on traders in Benue market, kill one, injure 13. So these are issues and scenarios that are playing out in different parts. And one wonders, why is the presidency, is it the thinking of the presidency that people are trying to bring down government? How? No, I, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there is no, there is no crime and criminal, there is no violence. The president condemns the kind of things that are being reported, are being seen. It is true that, uh, that uh, 
crime continues to mutate in our country. When President Buhari came into office, the big issue was Boko Haram. This day newspaper was bombed. The United Nations was bombed in Abuja. The, the police headquarters, every of our cities, major cities in the, no, in, the, in the north, including the federal capital territory. But from then, you know, we, we, the government faced an entirely new, the farmers and the, and the hardest uh, clashes escalated to levels that we hadn't seen before. Again, substantially, this has been brought down. Now, this matters of kidnapping, and, 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 and let's face facts. Nigerians clamored that service chiefs be removed over and over again. And the president granted this. The point I'm trying to make is, well, Dr. Bob Ahmed was on Arise television yesterday. In the program, he was saying that nothing was changing and that, that, that give these people a chance. Just three, four weeks into the office. And in any case, it is too soon to say that they have succeeded. But we have already seen visible changes. These people have come with zeal, with a lot of energy and imagination. And they are already putting their ideas into action. And we are seeing results already. We are seeing results. A number, huge arrests are being made uh, with the police, sponsors of not only kidnapping and, 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 and banditry, but even sponsors of terrorism. We are not just going after the actors in the field. So. And the thing is that she keeps saying that nothing is happening, nothing is changing. We don't seem to be appreciating sacrifices of our servicemen, and that is not fair to the nation. All right, um, um, uh, Mr. Babamid, I mean, I don't know how you would want to respond to what you have heard Mr. Garabashi say, but um, looking at the facts on ground, I mean, one would say one thing, but then we cannot remonstrate the fact that indeed, perhaps government is doing something. Maybe it's just not showing. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, let me say I have a lot of sympathy for Marlon Garba. It's, it's, it's very difficult selling a bad product. Um, he's doing his job. Uh, it's, it's his job is to try and make the administration uh, look good and um, to, to hit back at people who say the administration is failing. Um, but it's not doing enough, and I think Nigerians know they just need to look around the country. They know that this government is failing to secure them. We don't need um, uh, to, to label critics as uh, people who are ambitious, who want to bring down the country, people who do not appreciate the sacrifices of the government. The citizen on the street knows. Um, people in towns and cities know. Even the people in the north is know that a lot of what he's saying there is not true. Uh, we still have millions and millions of people living under the influence of Boko Haram. Um, the numbers change. Uh, towns and cities change today. Today they are in the hands of our troops. Tomorrow they are in the hands of Boko Haram. These are realities. Um, we can't wish them away. We wish uh, Marlon, what Marlon Garbo is saying is true, but it is not. Um, we, yes, uh, uh, um, service chiefs have been changed, but uh, we haven't seen uh, the result. And if you expect us to wait for another three, four months or six months or a year before the results of the new service chief shows, then uh, the country's security is going to be considerably worse than it is. Um, look, the bottom line is that President Buhari came, when he became to, came to office, like Marlon Garbo says, um, Boko Haram was the only real security threat in the country. Um, and today, uh, there are multiple threats. And again, let me remind us, there is also the threat that to national, to national cohesion uh, state of the country that these threats are generating in all parts of the country. Um, and it doesn't appear as if the administration thinks that that is problems to fix. Um, we're drifting apart from each other. We are creating enemies out of each other. We are telling Nigerians who are living in one part of the country to leave. Um, it doesn't appear as if that is uh, the concern of, of an administration. There are three things basically wrong with this administration. One is uh, clearly that it, it doesn't have a thinking capacity. It's, it's closed in, it's living in denial, 
Um, it doesn't believe that the magnitude of this problem is real. Uh, so they don't appreciate the, the, um, the fact that there is an interconnection between their weakness and the opportunism which crime is feeding into. The reason why banditry and kidnapping is escalating is that the bandit and the kidnapper realize it, there are, there's a huge vacuum uh, around governance and, and security and law and order. They have control of thousands and thousands of kilometers of, of, of our forests. This is a fact, and there's no way anybody can argue this away. Okay. Our military have no presence, police have no presence in huge parts of Nigeria. And that is why it's, it's relatively easy to do that, including Kasena, um, the president's own state. We're not happy to say this. We don't want to bring down the government of Muhammad, President Muhammadu Buhari. We don't want to, we believe in the democratic process. We want him to work. We don't want to keep going now saying he's failing, he's failing. But when he's failing, we have to say so. And he is failing to secure the country. There's no way you can put a spin on this. Okay. Uh, children are being kidnapped. Children are being taken away from schools. Um, parents are, are worried that children are, are, are in the hands of bandits. How do you explain all these things away? Whose responsibility okay. is it? Who should be a blame for all the things that are going wrong? Okay, well, what do you tell right. communities uh, yeah. whose, whose children uh, are kidnapped? That good, the president good, great, is doing great his issues best? You're, you're raising, Mr. Clearly, Gavame. it is not let, a good let, enough. Yeah, let, let, let me ask uh, uh, Mr. Gabashi, who, uh, for one, it is clear that, just as you said, no one can argue that the facts are facts. And no one can argue that there are existential threats, as so, so many people have said. The question then is, have we been able to track the real root of the issue? You said earlier that insecurity is mutating. Why is insecurity mutating? Have we been able to, to detect the root cause of it and what to do to make sure it doesn't mutate any further? OK, uh, let me first of all address the one or two issues Dr. Baba Ahmed raised. How long shall we wait for the service chiefs? to show their capability. Uh, again, three weeks is not sufficient time to say the more things change, the more they remain the same, which is the Tuba Bahamid's language. Uh, I, I hope in the coming days uh, or weeks, there will be this massive disclosure of the kind of things that is happening in the country too, in the country. Uh, uh, going after kingpins, sponsors, and those who harbor bandits, kidnappers, and the terrorists, the sponsors. I hope that there will be that disclosure that will not be done by the president. Two, this thing about national cohesion that he said, which is also the language of the opposition, and they are claiming to be a neutral set of people. Uh, he says, he says, and I also pity, I feel pity for Dr. Babuan because he's in a very uncomfortable position, I believe, where he is. Because, look, some of these things, you, you had one online president last week. That's what they called him, declaring a new Braft Biafra. Look, some of this, some, as Lai Mohammed said, some of these are charlatans. They are, they are sponsored in order to come and, and, and bully, threaten the president, thinking that the president will panic, his hands will shake, and then will take the wrong decisions. Dr. Babu Ahmed was a very strong actor in the government in this country that was executing opponents. In fact, Minister of Justice Attorney was executed by state actors. This government is not killing people. So that's one thing. Another thing, and then I want to say is that this, there is no vacuum in dealing with kidnapping. And I, I feel I was deeply touched by the video you showed a while ago. That, the, the, and, and this is the natural reaction from me and every other human. The moment they take away your son, your father, your member of the family, go and sell the house, go and sell the farm, sell the land, and get them back. Well, Kaduna State has a strong governor as we speak. In fact, the Nigeria police is engaged as we speak now in a major activity trying to convince Nigerians and the, the institutions of government that is not worth it paying for ransom, paying money to release kidnapped victims. This, so long as we continue to pay money, 
will continue to it will continue to thrive and none of us will be safe will ever be safe in this country nigerians are being persuaded even skeptics some of them are saying well let's see how it works so uh, this thing about payment to to captors of, of innocent citizens right. is something that has to end for kidnapping to end right. in this country you know in that same video you referenced one of the parents was saying well we need to also get those sponsoring the bandits in the cities. Yes, the bandits are in the bushes and forests, but there are those sponsoring them in the cities. And you referenced certain kingpins. So whose responsibility is it to uncover, to tell Nigerians who these kingpins are? If you're saying it won't come from the president, whose responsibility is it? Now, my issue here is that, uh, is that I don't want to be preemptive. Uh, some of these arrests are ongoing. Nothing is, is finalized as we speak now. But uh, if you follow the press, you, you, you probably would see that uh, uh, some people are already going to court to challenge certain detentions. I mean, we expect these obstacles will be placed on the way of the government. But there's no kidnapper there out there on the street who is possibly not sponsored by somebody, an arms supplier, or, or even somebody helping them to manage their own money. So all of these things are ongoing. And I believe that the authorities are fully unconscious of this and they will be making information public uh, as, as, as soon as uh, that is practicable. Okay, L let me see if I can capture the mind of the average Nigerian who has been seeing you know, these insecurity challenges shape shift over time. So we saw uh, the abduction late last year in Katsina where hundreds of students were taken, just not far from where the president was at that time. And then we saw this move to Niger. We saw it move to Zamfara State. By the way, all the states are close to each other. Then, now it's in Kaduna State. So this has been moving around. And we had pockets of little abductions here and there in some communities. And now it is in Kaduna State. 39 students, most of them girl, 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 girl students. And this is something that has been going on for a while. So when Nigerians look at that, and you see reports in the dailies, 12 killed in Kaduna, Sokoto, that is what they see. And you say that the government is uh, dealing with different challenges. Is the government overwhelmed? Mm. You say that the government is uh, dealing with different challenges. Is the government overwhelmed? No, not at all. There's nothing like saying we, we are, the government is overwhelmed. As I said earlier, a while ago, the crime keeps mutating. The criminals are sometimes the most ingenious people you have in given communities. If you are going this way, they anticipate you and then they change their own ways. This thing about school kidnapping, one of the, one of the issues that has been raised by, by people commenting in the press is the suspicion that uh, that money is being paid in order to recover them. And so therefore, if you continue to do that, then, then it grows into an industry. Then you don't get over it. So therefore, if there is a government, as we have uh, seen in, in Kaduna now saying, look, enough is enough, we won't, we won't pay. And I'm sorry for the family members uh, feeling about this, but let us also learn from experiences elsewhere uh, in other countries and all of that so that uh, although also it is true in states like Zamfara you have uh, the non-kinetic processes going on and they are also yielding dividends for, for that. So I think that local uh, crime temperature in any given state will help states to determine what to do. Mm. The, the, the president is, is capable, is, is, is doing whatever is required of him within is a spare of authority. This country so when, has three layers of government. We have states, we have local councils, and I hope right. that each one will be called to account at every point on these matters. So when uh, the president was quoted as saying that the one we saw in Jenge Bay will be the last abduction, I think it was the Minister of Aviation that said that, it will be the last. Uh, what was it thinking then? And seeing this, do you feel like... Uh, the president made a promise, and now it's been broken. We need to apologize to Nigerians and say, well, this is where we missed it. This is what we'll do to make it better. No, even your own network carried the Minister of Aviation, Senator Addis Rika, taking back what he said in that regard. 
and he said clearly that what he meant to say was that hopefully should, this should be the last. And one in that uh, press uh, briefing that he is also conscious of the fact that in order to breach the confidence of the government, in order to embarrass the president, some daredevil elements will try this sort of kidnapping elsewhere. And we're not surprised that they have tried it. But what are we doing about it? The government is working not only with the state, the federal government is not only working with the state governments, the UN is interested and in all of that. This Safe Schools Initiative, which we started and, 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 and ab ab abandoned at the lower levels of government, has just to be re recreated and reactivated. And then the schools must be secured. Uh, uh, Dr. Wabar spoke about closure of schools. If you are not sure they are safe, take them home. A lot of the young people are going to day school now in Katsuna. Let the schools be ready to receive them. Some of the structures we have seen coming from the states, would it, anybody in their sincerity call them schools? All right. Well, uh, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Papa Ahmed, uh, he did make reference to some very serious matters about you being part of a government that was executing people, talking about the former Minister of Justice. How do you respond to that? I have no idea what he's talking about. I don't know which minister was, was executed. I was uh, part of many governments. I was a permanent secretary for 10 years. I served under many presidents. I have no idea what Marlon Garwa is talking about. And, uh, and hear him speak uh, in, in this manner, to be honest with you, I'm more depressed now than when I came into this studio. This is how, how the spokespersons of the president will respond just telling people pre arrests are being made. We don't see anybody being arrested. Um, if they're arrested, why are they not being prosecuted? If they're kidnappers, if they're bandits, why aren't we seeing anybody being prosecuted? Why don't we see people being taken to courts? Who are these people? Where are they? Uh, the, yes, he's right. Uh, uh, banditry and kidnapping has become an industry. Uh, it's not just a bandit. When you talk about people, 200, 200 motorcycles, um, 50 motorcycles, three people on a, on a, on a motorcycle. Uh, motorcycles have to be serviced. People, somebody has to sell them weapons. Somebody has to train them on use of, wep of, of weapons. Um, this thing has grown into a big industry right under the nose of the president. There's no way you can deflect uh, attention from this. Uh, how do you explain uh, this, the ingrowing sophistication of, of the criminal in this country? Uh, you only do that by, by acknowledging the fact of the failure of, of the leadership to secure citizens. There's no way, we, how long do we want to wait until the president uh, gets around to understanding the nature of the problem? I, listening to Marlon Garba, to be honest with you, I just think that the, president has, the presidency has run out of ideas. Um, when they are confronted with a very serious challenge, they go around um, uh, looking for all sorts of diversions and uh, excuses. Nigerians don't want to hear any of this. We want our children to be, to, we want to stop to the kidnapping of children. We want to stop to um, uh, kidnapping of people on their farms, on their roads, in their houses. We, we want to stop the quarrels. Now, if you say that the threats to the national cohesion is just because some, some, someone sat there and said um, uh, there are, there, he's the president or whatever, then clearly I think that uh, the presidency is locked in. They're not listening to Nigerians. There are genuine, serious problems um, about people using language and taking action that suggests that they are attacking the foundations of our national unity and the integrity of the Nigerian state. Okay. Um, people are glibly talking about, we don't want to be part of Nigeria, we don't want to be... These are new. We have always lived with this kind of threats, but this is new. And if you mm. don't understand the escalation of erudentist rhetorics, um, ordinarily sensible people saying, we don't want to be part of this country, it is too insecure, uh, nepotism is too much uh, around the presidency, we, have, we don't see any future for our young people, young people are angry. If the presidency, if people like Marlon Garbosheu and his president do not understand that these represent existential threats to this country, then we are in even more trouble All than right. we are. All and right, uh, Dr. Babamed, to him. Good morning. Just pardon me, but we'll go to break. Uh, we'll come back and then uh, continue on this and uh, conclude as well in a moment. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, Mr. Shehu, uh, you heard it right there. He suggests that uh, the presidency seems to be focusing on the wrong things uh, and perhaps leading to questions such as, the, does the president get proper daily or regular briefings about the security situation in the country at the moment? Because as we speak, there are many who can travel on certain roads in different parts of the country. Many keep saying they're tired, they're leaving the country. Existential threats, as Dr. Baba Ahmed said, there are things that you can't just wish away. We seem to be fighting ourselves a lot more, those rhetorics. And the authorities don't seem to have a finger on these things. So uh, is there going to be a change of approach on the part of the president so that people can indeed see that, all right, that we will perhaps, if I could use the word, state of emergency on security, and then they get the sense that boots on the ground will ultimately yield to results. Well, uh, thank you for, again, this question. But first of all, let me go back to just one or two things that uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed did raise. And uh, to say that, I think that, uh, you know, there, there are problems in the, in, in the way he and maybe some of their group uh, operate. And this is why they, they seem to focus on one thing, which is just the president and refusing to be a part of the solution. When you look at what is happening in other, part of the, other parts of the country, some of the counterpart organizations that you have, they are busy organizing security summits and trying to get people to change their given attitudes in fact, only yesterday, the, the, the Deputy Inspector General of Police returned from the Southeast, meeting President's General of various communities, convincing them that this thing, and, and with the full cooperation of organizations such as the Ohanese, accepting the, the, the community policing, how it will help all of these things. If I am to read the litany of a Dr. Bob Ahmed's call for the president's resignation. That is, it's like, this is something he just feels that, that we are not denying him the right, as I said, to talk, to say truth to power. He has a right as a citizen, he can dissent. But, 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 but to say every given turn, president go, president you can. We don't, that's not, that's not democracy. There are problems in the country and people who think structurally we have problems, we have the parliament, go to the parliament and de debate the issues. They are elected. If you think you are electable, go and become senator or, or house of rep member and be part of the change that is happening. And to talk about 200 motorcycles in a community that are moving, it is sad, but it is also a commentary on the kind of support we give as a people to law enforcement agencies. Because community where there is total and unequivocal community support for law enforcement, some of these things will obviously be known, will obviously be reported, and will be taken uh, care of. But look at what uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed say: the, the contempt in which some people hold the president, Garba and his president. D Dr. Baba Ahmed, Buhari is your president. He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria elected by the people, and we should respect the voters. Hmm. Well, there's something, uh, Mr. Jir Mr. Shiu, there's something he also said that you may have missed out on responding to, and that is the fact that, well, you said that the arrests have been made, but there haven't been prosecutions. There haven't been strong enough deterrence to anyone, from any for anyone to not go into any of these criminalities. How do you respond to that? No, uh, I'm, I want to say the idea is not to preempt the all ongoing arrests that are ongoing. It is not over yet. And I believe that at a convenient uh, trajectory, those who are responsible will be addressing the nation. As for ordinary criminals, well, your routine uh, criminals that you are routinely, whether they are Boko Haram terrorists or bandits or, or kidnappers, on, Thousands of them are there. They are undergoing trials. In fact, a landmark judgment, I, the, the decision in Medigree was the conviction under this country's Terror, Terrorism Prevention Act. 
of high profile, you know, Boko Haram terrorists, three of them in Meduguri. So trials are going on. The processes are not for President Muhammad Buhari to drive. It is the justice system. Well, well the, some, one other thing that, that catches my attention in all that you have said is, uh, well, talking about the string of abductions and kidnappings that, you know, my colleague asked you earlier. It would seem like the attacks are predominantly on federal government-owned institutions, government secondary schools, uh, federal college of this, federal college of that, up until the recent one that we are talking about. It would seem like the federal government is the one that is being targeted with a specific message. What, what, what do you think of that? Well, um, as it is, uh, it is not for us to say this or that. And I believe that uh, when thorough investigations are undertaken, yes, it is possible that uh, motives may be established against uh, people or institutions. I don't have the facts, and I hope that uh, a thorough investigation would be able to tell us where all of this is coming from. Uh, but, but yes, even if it is a village secondary school that is under local government or even a community, when huge headlines like that uh, hit the screen, it embarrasses not only President Muhammad Buhari, it embarrasses Nigerians at home and in the diaspora. It is an embarrassing and certainly unacceptable. And President Muhammad Buhari would not rest until this is, this is also put behind us. So this is to say that, I mean, the president gets briefings on a daily basis as to what's happening ar across the country. Am I right? Ah. Yeah, in fact, let me tell you, because Chamberlain also did uh, raise that issue. Uh, look, this, it is the kind of propaganda that is being spread by the opposition, raising questions about the, the capacity of the president to govern. My warning to people who are in the opposition is that don't chance him. He has, the president knows it all. In fact, he is perhaps the most voracious reader and the listener that you can ever find. I started with him as a media assistant in the campaign. I found it absolutely you know, challenging, meeting up with the, and if only Nigerians knew, I would almost reveal the secret that the fastest way you can reach President Muhammad Buhari, if they know, is go to the press. Reveal what the wrongdoing that is happening in the media. He will read it before most other Nigerians. Mm. So speaking specifically now about the, the, the recent abduction, because, I mean, that's what we're faced with. Uh, who is taking the lead? Because listening to the parents, they say, well, this is to the federal government and even the state government. And they say they've not been spoken to uh, yet by both governments. So in terms of, do I say, trying to rescue them, negotiation, or, or whatever it is that the government is doing, who is taking the lead here? Let me say to you that, uh, in my view, whoever in their situation will not be a satisfied person until their family members are back at home. And we wish that their ordeal will end soonest. Uh, Kaduna has a, has a very young and dynamic commissioner for internal security, and he's been doing this challenging job with the excellence. So they've been doing their best. They have a security committee in the state, as to your question whether who is leading. The Kaduna State has a security committee chaired by the governor. And they have all of these elements, the military, the police, staff, everyone is in it. And they are taking this together. I believe that they have the best interest of the captives in their mind, whatever they decide. They have the best interest of law and order and the security of this nation. Well, the chair of Nigeria Governors Forum, and governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kaide Fahemi, was quoted in the press a couple of days ago that all of these agitations and calls in several quarters are as a result of frustration. It was in the press. So is the president aware of that? Or what is he thinking? What does he plan to do about that? Yeah, well, of course, the, 
there are there's frustration coming from many many directions look for instance most of the criticism of the government in its uh, in and the economy is on account of the fact that critics ignore the fact that this is this is a covid economy every economy all economies of the world are in trouble because of covid and nigeria is not in isolation but when they choose to attack our administration they forget the fact as a matter of fact nigeria doing so well managing covid that we and the commendation of united nations and only a week ago the indian foreign minister was saying the good, about something about the good work that that our covid machinery is, is doing we are the first in africa to come out of recession in fact the first in the world to emerge from recession arising from the competent and capable management of the economy by president muhammad buhari so therefore where there is a mistake we are ready to accept we make correction but please give credit when it is due i'm not, I'm not quite sure uh, that handles the question because there's there's been a lot of calls from different quarters i mean calls for secession in some sense some are asking for fairness equity justice saying that we're not getting as much so i mean covid is just about a year or, or thereabouts the calls have been there before that time so the question is i mean the president seen all these calls uh, what kind of response reaction does he give to that Well, let me say to you that uh, the president is concerned about the unity and continued existence of this country. In the period of the civil war, four years, ask his contemporaries, he didn't take one day for vacation. He didn't go on leave. He fought to keep this country. So he's not oblivious of all of the things. But in this country also, there are people who, who will say, bring down the roof so long as they're not in the tent. This is a problem we have. There are serious problems and the challenges are there. But the National Assembly is, is, is beckoning on Nigerians. Come, come, we are ready. We want to amend constitution. We want to restructure. How many people are listening? So therefore, you begin to wonder then, so what, to what effect all of this like, uh, uh, clamor? Uh, people would, obviously, obviously people will have frustrations about everyday matters of living, including our politics. But we have chosen democracy as a system of government. And there is a way of doing democracy. We should do it that way. Not, not to set up a parallel parliament. We have an elected parliament, and then people are saying, give us a talk shop somewhere so that, uh, so that they get busy. Mm. And that, that we have not had a government in this country, whether President Obasanjo says this democracy. Mr. Jonathan set up a conference. Mr. Obasanjo set up a conference. What did we get from all of that? But even the reports of either of those uh, presidents that you talked about, many have advocated that at least the government should take a look at it. How far with that? Those people, those governments that set up those uh, commissions, why didn't they deem it necessary to implement? They had the chance to do so. They just filed them. They just filed them away. This president is an elected president. He leads one arm of the government. We have a parliament that is that is that is not controlled by a vortex of power, power mongers. They are working for Nigerians. Hmm. All right, uh, Dr. Let's go to Baba the parliament. Ahmed. Yes, Dr. Babamed, um, you, you've uh, heard a lot of the things that have been said. Um, first of all, I, I assume that you have some reactions before we throw in a question. Um, j just to say, uh, see, it's all these things that Malangar Roshan would say, let the president fix security. If he can't do it immediately, then let him do something that indicates that he's capable of doing, um, of, of securing Nigerians. If the use of force, if the, you're not going to pay money to get the Kaduna College of Forestry out, then for goodness sake, use an other means to get them. It's not just the responsibility of Kaduna State Government. It's also principally the responsibility of the federal, gov uh, of, of the federal government. Do something to get those people out. Secondly, 
please do something about how insecure we are. All this talk about the president is concerned, the president is doing something about it, it's not good enough. Every single day our lives are getting worse. We cannot wait for the president to get around to fixing things. That's what he's done. He was supposed to hit the ground from day one. He hasn't. And uh, consequently, things are just getting worse. Now, if every time Nigerians complain about being marginalized, we don't want to hear this, and you dismiss it as, oh, this is just the opposition, then these problems will grow. Because even if it is the opposition, it's your job to deal with the opposition. As ascribing mm -hmm. problems to just the opposition doesn't solve them. Oppos it is the opposition's responsibility to make you look bad. Okay. It's your <laughs> job to, to, to make the opposition uh, less, less effective in making you look bad. If, but if, if the only response of the presidency is that every criticism, every complaint, every grievance that, that people say, the government is not working, um, uh, we don't see the result of all these things that Malaga is saying, and you say, oh, that is just talk, then clearly then you're not dealing with the problem. Then uh, prioritization. Um, yes, maybe we're doing well uh, with, with COVID, but we are going to, soon going to start having to pay more for fuel. What does the president say about these kind of things? Why doesn't he say anything at all? A few weeks ago, the national security advisor of the president said that they can't trace money, billions of naira. They can't trace the weapons that were ordered by the previous uh, um, heads of military agencies. We haven't had a word either from the president or from somebody else to clarify this issue. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't we be worried? Where is the president leading the governors? You hear the governors beginning to call out the president in terms of the manner in which the federal government supports them. Some are saying pay bandits, some are saying we will not pay bandits, some are saying um, we will negotiate, some are saying we will not negotiate. How much is the president uh, relating with governors? How, where is the national cohesion? Where is the perspective adopted in conjunction between the federal and the state governments? How do you tell villagers in many, many parts of Nigeria that both the president and the governors are actually concerned? Where is the synergy that we're supposed to have, the Office of the National Security Advisor, Service Chiefs, uh, intelligence agencies, where are those things? Bottom line, he hasn't said a word about what Nigerians should expect in terms of fighting insecurity. And that is our biggest concern now. It doesn't matter what you do about COVID. It doesn't matter what you do about everything else. We just want to be more secure. We want to stop fighting each other rather than fighting the, the criminal and the bandit. The government is not fighting him. We cannot fight him. We, we bribe them to release our people. Government doesn't want to go in that direction. Then government should find a way to stop us from spending billion, millions or billions to get uh, our people away from bandits. That's the bottom line. And we do need to lower the pressure. It is the responsibility of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to pay attention to the grievances of Nigerians. They are real, they are genuine. A lot of Nigerians feel alienated. A lot of people feel they don't want to be part of this country. That is their reserve. That is their responsibility. That, that's their right. But you do have a responsibility to find out why are we getting a lot of this talk why are we getting people telling Fulani people to leave the southern part of the country? What is wrong with this country that suddenly now we are beginning to hate each other? We are beginning to identify each other as the problem. That is again the responsibility of the President of the Federal Republic. He's not doing anything. He doesn't consider it as his problem. Or, like Malan Garba keeps saying, that's the opposition. Every problem in this country is the responsibility of the opposition. It has nothing to do with the President. The President is doing well. It's the country that is not doing well. It's the communities that are not helping. It is the bandit that is causing the problem. We can't have a president who is sitting there and then blaming everybody else for the wars of the, of, of, of the country. That is not what we elected him for. All right, uh, Mr. Chair, in addition to your response, uh, the governor of Niger State some time ago did also say that he's not getting support from security agencies and that several other parts of the state are not policed. So finally, go that, ahead, give your response. People should be free to say whatever because this country is under, this country is under the best democratic government we have had since uh, the Fourth Republic. President uh, will not lock up people. There is no, there is no state support, uh, uh, assassination by state actors under Buhari. And so therefore, 
people can say whatever they want to say and they will go home and sleep very soundly. And, and I want to assure Dr. Obama, I had one thing with President Buhari is that President Buhari will not panic. This president is focused on securing this country, he's focused on the unity of this country and he will preserve it. So what, what do we expect from Nigerians who are panicking as a result of what they see or and read, those who are brandishing AK-47, those who are threatening the existence or unity of the country? What should we expect from the president, security-wise, moving forward? Banditry, the president has given a clear order. Anybody who is holding AK-47 illegally should be shot if they are not ready to surrender their own their own weapons. What do we expect of the uh, of the of the of the citizens of the country? First of all, the media. Let us also say that we have we have the most vibrant media community on the continent and we expect a robustness of criticism from them. But some of the elements, I am careful in saying some of the elements in our media that glamorize crime, that make Boko Haram look like heroes, it, 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 doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't help anybody. And, and so we keep confusing the ordinary citizens. Otherwise, and I'm sure that with the less and less of the, of the propaganda by opposition, which is choosing to make capital out of uh, our misfortune, Nigerians will sleep better. And, and they deserve to be respected. Well, this shoot on sight order, I mean, it's, it's been generating a lot of talk. And just recently, there was talk about the bandits wanting some form of assurance that they will not be shot on sight, some form of protection, saying that maybe that's why they're still holding on to the Kaduna students, for example. And there are suggestions that maybe the government should relax that. Is that a possibility that government is looking at? And I'm not competent to answer this question. I believe that the law enforcement should uh, answer this. Well, the president gave the order, Mr. Shehu. So is the president willing to, I mean, measure that order? Or this is just shoot at sight and that's it? Order has been given. It remains his order until he changes it. All right. So, uh, well, let's take it back to Dr. Baba Ahmed. So you've talked about, uh, seems like the government is not doing enough. And as we wind down, I'd just like you to, if we can, give the government KPIs. I mean, these are the things we expect. If Mr. Shehu says the statement about this being the last abduction, that's the Jangebi one, the caveat was by the grace of God. Well, if you could give the government KPIs in the next one month, these are the things we want to see. What would they be? Well, we would like to see um, less talk and more action. We would like to see the president literally come forward and speak to the nation, not just putting um, people like Marlon Garwa to, um, to speak. He's our president. We elected him. He cannot just stay and, and sconced in, in, um, in the villa and, uh, and, uh, and send speakers, um, spokespersons to speak. He needs to address the nation. Something is wrong. We are not safe, we are not secure, we are worried, we are desperate. He should talk to us. Two, I think the president needs to expand the, the, his access to information. Uh, listening to Marlon Garbo for the last, last 40, 40, 45 day, minutes, I am absolutely convinced the president has no access, no information about the actual state of the country. And I'm maybe more scared now than I was before the program. Um, Mr. President has given instructions for this. Mr. President has given instructions for this. Mr. President, who is monitoring the effectiveness of all these orders of the president? Why are they not being followed? What is wrong? Is the pro problem bigger than the president? Or is it simply that the president is content to just give out information? So do something about the, th the orders that you give. Monitor right. how things are. Punish people who fail to carry out these orders. Reward those who do so. Let's see evidence on the ground. 
We okay. cannot have bandits running around this country taking more and more space, and then our lives is being squeezed between an ineffective government and criminals who think that the government is too weak to fight them. This is the All bottom right. line. Do okay, something. Mr. Show. Mr. Okay. President, please address the country properly. All right, Dr. Show. Uh, um, um, Mr. Show, uh, as briefly as possible, because we need to go, will you advise the president to address the country? All I will say is that uh, in every country, uh, and every president has a style of his own. This president is not, uh, is not the showman for TV. I've said this before. If uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed is sick of seeing the face of uh, Garba Shehu, well, I, I speak for the president of Nigeria by his pleasure. It's a privilege if the president decides that uh, he will, doesn't like it, I'm off. I, I will go away, and, and he sacks me. And, and, and for God's sake, Dr. Baba Ahmed, the latitude of information and intelligence that is available to the president is not available to you, is not available to any other Nigerian. And so therefore, don't underestimate the kind of information, data, and, and perspectives that are available. The president, at every time, at every point and the time, he has choices to make. He makes his own choices. All right, uh, Mr. Gaba Sheo, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, as well as uh, Dr. Hakim Baba, Ahmed, Director of Publicity Advocacy for the Northern Elders Forum. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time this morning.